In this video, we will look at the latest numbers for Q4 of 2020 and tell you how bad it is out there for home buyers. Hey guys, my name is Mac Rogers. I'm a real estate broker here in the East Bay. In this channel, we talk about living in the East Bay. What is it like to live here? How much does it cost to live here? Where do you live here? And the proverbial question, how's the market or where's the market headed? Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I have bad news for you if you're buying a home. It is brutal out there if you are a home buyer. If you're a home seller, it's great until you have to replace that property that you just sold, especially if you're staying within the Bay Area. If you're moving out, it's a little bit easier. Let me give you a quick story here from the trenches before we move on. There was a property for sale in our neighborhood that got listed and it was priced relatively well for the condition of the property and when you compare it to the previous sales. Now, I thought that it could easily go up by another 100,000 because there was nothing else for sale in the neighborhood in the same size. Well, I was dead wrong. It went over not 100,000, not 200,000, not even 300,000. It went for 350,000 over asking. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not 350,000. It's 351,000 to be exact. I mean, we're not talking about a property that's fully renovated and all updated, okay? Yes, it was clean and it had great potential, Someone even passed away of natural causes in the property. Now that used to be something people, or should I say a lot of people don't like, but now that doesn't really even matter because there's, there's so much demand out there and so little inventory. Okay, so let's go back to our update. Here are some key highlights from the latest numbers from the National Association of Realtors or NAR. Highlight number one, single family existing home prices rose in all measured metro areas in the fourth quarter. This is for the whole United States. For our purposes, the East Bay is lumped into the San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward Metro. Highlight number two, 88% of the metro areas had double digit price gains. This last highlight doesn't apply to us here in the Bay Area. The monthly mortgage payment on a typical existing single family home rose to 1,040 and the family income needed to afford the home increase to 49,908 compared to one year ago. According to NAR, every metro area tracked through the fourth quarter of 2020 witnessed home prices grow from a year ago, according to the latest quarterly report. As I mentioned, 88% of the metros saw that increase. That's 161 areas that saw double digit price increases. For comparison, only 115 metro areas saw such growth in the third quarter of the same year. Now, I don't have to tell you why that is. You know, it's mostly because low interest rates coupled with high demand and low inventory makes this, as the chief economist for NAR said, and I quote, the fourth quarter of 2020 presented circumstances ripe for home price increases. Mortgage rates reach record lows, thereby driving up demand. At the same time, Inventory levels also reach record lows, leading to grim inventory conditions of insufficient supply in the fourth quarter." Unquote. Here are some of the biggest price gainers in the nation. Bridgeport, Connecticut, 39% gain. Pittsfield, Massachusetts, 32.2%. Atlantic City, New Jersey, 30%. Naples, Florida, 29.9%. Barnstable, Massachusetts, 28.9%. Crestview, Florida, 28.6%. Boise, Idaho, 27.1%. A favorite destination of Californians. Binghamton, New York, 24.4%. Kingston, New York, 24.2%. And Spokane, Washington, 23.6%. Another favorite destination for Californians. It is worth noting that national destination sites such as Atlantic City, uh, Barnstable, and Naples, along with small towns within Within driving distance from major cities like Binghamton and Kingston in New York, they all saw large price increases, an indication of strong demand for vacation homes and also affordable homes during the ongoing pandemic. You know, we've talked about how the service industry and tourism has been hard hit by this pandemic. The one thing that was a bit surprising is that vacation housing still did well in terms of sales. Now, this is because many people had the freedom to work from anywhere. So that helped that part of housing. As a matter of fact, I have several clients that have vacation houses or condos in Tahoe, 
and they are all book solid as families basically said we're going to be stuck inside anyways might as well change the scenery. In the Bay Area, our two metro regions are included in the 10 most expensive metro areas for the fourth quarter. Again, no surprise really here, right? The median home price for the San Jose Metro is around 1.4 million. In San Francisco, a little cheaper at 1.1 million. Yes, interest rates are so low. They climbed a little higher to 2.73% from the low of 2.65%, but still this is super low. So this is driving people to want to buy, but there's nothing to buy. I kind of liken this to the reverse of seeing a great sale happening for stuff that you don't need, but you buy it anyways because it's so cheap. Not that we do that, okay? Now let's go back to price increases. Here's the bottom line for this. There's more to come. It's not stopping anytime soon. You know when people tell me that they will wait, I ask them, wait for what? Higher prices? Higher interest rates? It doesn't make sense if you're ready, willing, and able. Look, the vaccine is becoming more available to the population. I read in a report, I read a report that said uh, we could also be heading to herd immunity by the summer. As the number of cases go down and as we improve and things start to really open up and the economy gets back to a more normal level, most likely we're gonna be kicking this up another notch. I mean, think about it, there's so much pent pent up demand out there right now. So if you are looking at a home right now with a medium price of 800,000, that could easily be 7% higher by the end of the year or next year. Plus take into account higher interest rates. So you get hit with a double whammy. I actually would argue that where we are in the Bay Area, it could be closer to 10% or higher price appreciation. So that 800,000 you are now looking at, that could be 880,000 plus maybe interest rates of 3% or higher. That's probably around a $500 higher monthly payments. So it really becomes kind of a race. If you wait, you still end up paying higher prices. If it does pull back say five or 10%, guess what? You're back to where we are right now, but still most likely paying higher because as the economy improves, interest rates go higher. So pick your poison, I guess. Like I said, if you're ready, willing, and able to buy, don't stop. It could be frustrating, but let me tell you, all these other buyers will get frustrated and a lot of them will stop their search and one day you find yourself bidding on a house that is not super competitive because a lot of the buyers have stopped looking. Case in point, I had two clients that I helped out get their homes recently. One was under 5,000 list and the other one was 5,000 over list. These were in Fremont and Dublin, two very competitive areas. Why were we able to get that? It's because we never stopped looking. And finally, we locked out from competing with 10 to 15 offers or more to all of a sudden, it was only us in the Dublin property and only two bidders for the Fremont property. That's my bit of a nugget advice for you today. Never give up. So let's continue on with the update. The national median single family home price rose 14.9% on a year to year basis to 315,900. All regions experienced double digit year over year price growth. The Northeast led this charge at 20.7%, followed by the West at 15.5%, the Midwest at 15%, and finally the South at 14%. I've said it in my previous videos, this whole phenomenon of bidding wars, lack of inventory that used to be a California or a Bay Area problem is now a national thing. These price increases have definitely benefited home sellers. But according to NAR's Lawrence Yoon, these large shifts in home prices could soon become detrimental to home buyers. Quote, the average working family is struggling to contend with home prices that are rising much faster than income. This sidelines a consumer from becoming an actual buyer causing them to miss out on accumulating wealth from home ownership. While I do feel for people that want to buy but can't afford it, is it really something that we should be manipulating? I keep hearing the word unaffordable. Is it really unaffordable when people are lining up and bidding up properties? These are natural market forces. Nonetheless, Lawrence Yu notes that low mortgage rates are helping many home buyers afford their monthly mortgage payments. In the fourth quarter of 2020, a family needed an income of 49,908 to cover a 30 year fixed rate mortgage with 20% down payment affordably, which is only slightly higher than the income required to afford a home one year ago, 
One year ago, it was 48960 In other words, even though prices are increasing, it is offset by low interest rates. Interest rates have a bigger factor in monthly payment rather than price increases. In a majority of the metro areas, 130 of the 183 metro areas NAR tracked, a family needed less than 50000 to pay their mortgage. However, in seven metro areas, NAR found that the family needed more than 100000 in income to buy a house. This is certainly the case in the San Jose metro area and the San Francisco metro area. In San Jose, you need 222000 median income. In San Francisco metro, you need 181000 median income. And as you can see, the rest of the West is the same thing. You need to be making more than 100000 to afford homes in these areas. Anaheim, Honolulu, San Diego, LA, Boulder, Colorado. Really, nothing surprising at this point, right? Again, even though home prices have rapidly escalated, monthly mortgage payment has only marginally increased because of historical lower rates. So what's the bottom line? What do you do if you're a buyer? Like I said earlier, if you're ready, willing, and able, and you have a need to buy a home, go for it and don't stop but be aware and realistic of what's happening out there. I've seen it time and again, after two or three offers, some buyers all of a sudden lose hope and they take a breather in their home search. I know of some home buyers that basically would take a breather for one to two years and guess what? Prices have gone up more than 20% from the first time they've, uh, you know, they've started their search. So you never know when or where all of a sudden, you find the right home and your chances are higher because you have less competition. For sellers, does it mean slap any price on your property? <laughs> Absolutely not. While buyers are willing to pay huge premiums, they also expect that homes that they are buying are priced right compared to what's on the market. So make sure you still price it competitively and that your home is presentable. Even in this hot seller market, there are homes that don't sell. Hey, if we can help you out, give us a text, a call, or an email. Please subscribe, like, and share this video if you found it useful. Now, if you didn't, leave us a comment below and let us know why. Have a great day.